I just gotta say these costumes are kind of perfect. We are the ultimate DC duo. Yes, tell me everything about today's episode of DC All Access. All right, I'll do it. We're gonna talk with Jeff Parker about taking over Aquaman. Then we've got Mark and Draco, and we're gonna talk about Ferris. Also, Batman Origin DLC. What about the Comic-Con giveaway? Okay, I can't really understand me when you talk in your Batman voice. It's not a Batman voice. <laughs> I have strep throat today. Did you say it's not? What? Maybe offer me a lozenge? Do you want a sausage? You're not a friend. Tons of fan speculation on the internet about the new DLC, specifically a guy who's very cold-hearted. Yes, he is. Everybody's talking about Mr. Freeze, and you are here to talk about the fact that... Mr. Freeze is the focus Brilliant. of uh, Cold Cold Heart, which is our big open-world narrative-based DLC that we'll be releasing for Arkham Origins. We're super excited to kind of give fans the origin of this great Batman character. It's like a mini chapter in the game. You know, if you guys played and saw in Initiation, it was more like a, a challenge map that had a, a little narrative wrapped around it. This is actually, you know, in-game mission story content with a you know brand new story wrapped around Mr. Freeze in the Arkham Origins setting. And you know. Batman is a man who's got a lot of wonderful toys. Yes. And you're presenting him with some new toys for this particular challenge. Yep. So early in the DLC, Batman will take on um, Mr. Freeze's guys who have cryogenic weaponry that Batman is experiencing and facing for the first time. And he comes to realize very quickly that the current suit he has is not good enough. So he tries this experimental suit that Alfred's been working on, which we're calling the XE, which is for extreme conditions. Mm -hmm that will actually change gameplay and help you be more resilient against these type of weapons. And when Scott Snyder drops that suit into one of his books, your heart's gonna explode. I'd love it. I love Scott, so if he wants to use our suit, we'd be more than happy. Go right ahead. Go for it. And it's not just about the DLC today. You actually brought something very special for the fans. Uh, for your viewers of DC All Access, we brought a collector's edition of the game, mm -hmm. signed by Mr. Troy Baker, who's our Joker. If you guys want a chance to win, just tweet us uh, your favorite Arkham game using the hashtag DC All Access. But thank you guys so much for being so My supportive pleasure. of the show, My as pleasure. always. Thank you. And I think I speak for all of them when I say keep making awesome DLC. We will. This story arc of Ferris, we're taking Cinderella to India? What was it about that setting that you were like, yes, this is the perfect place for her? Well, because the arc deals a lot with those, those hybrid mouse creatures, I was always fascinated by this temple in India that worships rats. And like the guy that, that sits there will sit there and there'll be millions of rats crawling over and there's big bowls of milk everywhere. And they went to India, the second or third arc of uh, Ferris, they, but they hadn't touched on Ramayan. Ramayan's this big hulking hot blue guy. I'm like, of course Cinderella would know him and have slept with him, so. <laughs> What I love about your writing is that you write such badass women, and for Cinderella, she's a spy. What kind of spy would you equate her to? Oh, she's definitely the actual novel Ian Fleming, James Bond. You know, she does what she has to do, and she's not afraid to use, to quote Pat Benatar, sex as a weapon. <laughs> uh, I think women would be better spies than men. It's so, true. you know. We can use our feminine wiles. Absolutely. How did you come about working on this project? I've known Bill for years. I've been a fan of Bill's since he used to d draw Dungeons and Dragons ads in the back of comics in the <laughs> 80s. He said that there was an opening on the, on a, the third Cinderella arc, and he said, do you have any ideas? And I said, well, what, whatever happened to those mice that turned, what if one of them didn't turn into back into a man when this clock struck midnight? And from there, the idea just extrapolated to tie into what's going on in the main book. So, and then it's all going to come to a head in Fable Town in issue 26. So it's going to get it's going to get pretty crazy. Aquaman, without question, one of the most talked about books from the New 52. What was it like stepping into the shoes of a little writer named Jeff Johns? When Jeff and Ivan started the book, it, they took it back to 50s, 60s Aquaman and just started working off that with a modern sensibility and that worked completely for me, so that's where I'm going with it. But a lot of it is I wanted to get Aquaman back up on the surface. I really do feel like people lose interest when he spends too much time underwater. 
but that's important and it needs to be there. But I think you've got to actually work it out to almost a, uh, a proportionate pie balance, you know. What is your collaboration with Paul the Artist? What's that process like? It's like, here's what I'm thinking of doing. What kind of stuff were you hoping to get to? One of the things he put in for a while back was he wanted to draw Swamp Thing. All right. We can do that. We can have Swamp Thing appear in Aquaman. That's no problem. So in issue 31, it's all him and Swamp Thing. But like uh, coming up in the next issue, he has to go to his high school reunion. And that's something that not every superhero artist is necessarily good at. It's like, how do you get that across that so everybody who's been going through this, are they going to be able to relate to this? And I think you will. In fact, I'm, I'm extremely proud of the whole scene when he goes to his high school. Hey there, I'm Judd Myers from Blast Off Comics. While some heroes say they're here to help, are they really? Or do they have more sinister motives? Only a man of Lex Luthor's intellect can really know for sure. So imagine you're the smartest man on earth, a self-made billionaire. Everyone loves you. Then along comes an all-powerful alien who can do pretty much anything, a god on earth. And the people are just supposed to trust him? I don't think so. Enlisted by the government early in Superman's career to trap and study the Man of Steel, Luther's obsession with proving Superman to be an alien threat eventually led to his downfall, public disgrace, and being jailed for his role in creating Kryptonian monsters and viruses based on Superman's DNA. Luther and his rivalry with the Blue Boy Scout has taken on many incarnations since his first appearance in Action Comics number 23 in 1940. From mad scientist to cunning businessman to mech-suited maniac, these days, the new 52 Luther leads the Injustice League against the conquering crime syndicate. And in April, the unthinkable will happen. Lex Luthor will be joining the Justice League. And the League meetings just got a lot more awkward. I'm Judd Myers. See you next time. I'm actually feeling a lot better right now. This Superman thing really suits me. Yeah, I mean, you're really getting your color back, Blair. You're going to need to practice that Batman voice. OK, I think you gave me your cold. Oh, can I offer you a lozenge? Yeah. Kidding. Great news, you guys. <laughs> you can still come to Comic-Con with us. Yep, all you need to do is go to dccomics.com slash watch and win. Click right down here. Answer three trivia questions correctly for your chance to win four-day passes to Comic-Con. Oh, and airfare vouchers and hotel rooms. We are hooking you up. With our producer, Bridget, also. Or if you're into it, our producer, Chuck. <laughs>